So I have to be very upfront with you all about something about myself. You see, I'm a very literal person. What this means is that I need patterns, repeatable formulas and algorithms in order to be accepting of a situation. And this has its fair share of pros and cons. Its major benefit is that I can take well-tested models of one subject, superimpose them onto something else in order to make sense of a situation that I haven't experienced before. Well, likewise, it too has its fair share of cons. The most prevalent being, and my family and friends will testify to this, I'm extremely rigid and stubborn in my thinking. And as you can imagine, this made it fairly difficult for me to interact with other people when I was younger. Whenever I saw advice, I got the cliche, just be confident, or just be yourself. How many of you guys actually know what that means? Yeah, me neither. And as you can imagine, by the time I was a, a teenager, I became frustrated. I was frustrated with myself. I was frustrated with the world around me, even people that were very close and dear to me. And so like any dutiful, brooding teenager, I, did, I locked myself in my room and I did one of two things. I either played video games, I played a lot of video games, the PlayStation 2, Easy Grace Invention by Man, or I played music. And thankfully, I did the latter because little did I know at that time, that would be my framework for my human interactions later on in life. But that too came at a price. You see, the more infatuated I became with music, the more of a recluse I became in order to study it more. So flash forward, I'm graduating high school in Pennsylvania, and I am 100% without a doubt socially awkward. Dreaded the thought of being around other people. Dreaded the thought of meeting new people. But I, too, am a human. And like many other humans, I wanted companionship. I wanted to make friends and develop relationships. And so when I moved to Virginia for college, I said, AJ, damn it, you can make friends, whether you like it or not. And so I moved to Virginia for college, and I went out to social venues. I went to parks, malls. If I was feeling particularly masochistic that night, I would go to parties with the sole mission of talking to complete and random strangers, which, yes, is as awkward as it sounds. And I met a lot of cool people. I met a lot of people that I still talk to to this day, but I wasn't happy because my results were unpredictable. You see, I thought if I said A, B, and C to one person, that should work universally through everybody that I meet. I'm sure you all recognize that does not work. But I was too stubborn to accept that result. And so I became frustrated again, and I locked myself in my room, this time in Virginia, and I played music. And I remember I was playing guitar, and something clicked. I understood the meaning to the worst piece of advice ever given by anybody. I understood what it meant to just be yourself. And now I'm sure you're wondering, well, what does playing guitar and just being yourself have anything to do with each other? And I'll tell you the secret. Not a damn thing. Absolutely nothing. But if you remember, one of the benefits to the way that I think is that I can take a model from one subject and overlay it onto something completely unrelated to make sense of it. And this is one of those times that my convoluted thinking process actually benefited me. So let me explain. I was playing a song that demanded a lot of speed. And I knew the notes. For the most part, my fingers could keep up, except for my left pinky on my fretting hand. It was overcompensating for wild, with wild motions in order to maintain that speed, in order to keep that even sequence pattern of notes. I suffered from what guitarists call wild pinky syndrome. And in order to cure well, I'm, I'm glad you like that. It took me forever to make that on Illustrator. <laughs> in order to cure wild pinky syndrome, right, I had to do two things. I had to synchronize my pinky with the rest of the motions of my body, 
And then on top of that, I had to utilize the speed that I already had. I synchronize and use what I had. Keep those two points in your head because it's very important to the statement that I'm trying to make. And now, if you will all collectively join me in looking like complete dorks for the next 15 seconds, I want you to think of your favorite guitar solo. I want you to break out the air guitar. Come on, come on, break out the air guitar. That's right. All right, all right. You hear? Did y'all hear that? Yeah. All right. So what I noticed is that like a lot of you guys were able to move your fingers really, really, really fast, as fast as I can. I've been playing guitar for almost 13 years, and that's not fair. But that's besides the point. Imagine the revelation that occurred to me when I realized that speed was already built in me, just as it is built in all of you air guitarists out there. And so when I told myself, and I asked myself, well, what if instead of just training for raw speed, I trained for synchronization? What if instead of training for raw speed, I decided to master the speed that I already had? I became a faster guitar player. But a myriad of other things happened. I became a more accurate guitar player, a cleaner guitar player, a more relaxed guitar player, a more confident guitar player. I'm like, huh, all right, being relaxed, being confident. And I had to synchronize and use what I already had a guitar. Maybe that's how it carries over into interacting with other people. And so I sat down and I, I thought about this and I honed it and I went out and you know, tested it in the field. And I found that when I wasn't forcing contrived conversations on people, people generally thought that I was more attractive. People wanted to talk to me more. And so me being the obsessive individual that I am, I had to make a formula for this. So the definition for the worst piece of advice ever given, be yourself is equal to gratitude divided by the absolute value of synchronization. So what is synchronization? Simply put, synchronization is acting in ways that are congruent to you. For me, time is enormous. I value my time very highly. And so if somebody is late meeting with me or they waste my time, I will let them know that it bothers me. But I won't be a jerk about it because I don't know what happened. You know, maybe an asteroid hit their house. I hope not. But who knows? But likewise, I make it a huge point to be punctual with everybody. I'm a huge advocate of if you're earlier on time, if you're on time, you're late. So then what is gratitude? Well, we all know what gratitude is, being thankful for what you have. But I want to take this a step forward and say using what you have to accomplish the goals that you have, or at least as much as you can. If you want to be an animator, you don't have the fancy computer or the fancy software in order to do it. I'm sure all of you have a pen and paper. Do it like Walt Disney did. If you guys want to get into shape, but you're working 60, 70 hours a week, or maybe you can't afford a gym membership, take the stairs and do some push-ups after you go to the bathroom. My favorite example is one of my favorite bands, Queen. Brian May was doing an interview uh, with Absolute Radio. Brian May is Queen's guitarist. And he was saying how when he was a kid, he did not have enough money to buy a new guitar. So he went to his dad. They built one from just pieces of wood laying around the house with no prior guitar luthiering experience whatsoever. And that guitar is called Red Special. It is the same guitar he plays shows with, and it is the same guitar you all hear whenever you listen to their albums. And Brian May is one of the most respected and well-known musicians in rock and roll history. When you are better at mastering the instrument that is you, two things begin to happen. First of all, you become an active person rather than a reactive person. And we all know what a reactive person is. or somebody that seeks consolation in the reactions of other people. They change their personality to get a favorable result from another person. They're a yes man. That's a reactive person. An active person, on the other hand, acts in ways that are most natural to them. 
They are brave enough to know when to say no, smart enough to know when to say yes, and it always acts in a way that's congruent with their values. And the second part that happens is now you have a point of reference because you know yourself so well when dealing with other people, which is so important when learning to empathize or modulate with other people. So what is modulation? I found this wonderful definition from the ever-reliable Wikipedia. But hear me out. In music, modulation is the act from changing from one key to another. This may or may not be accompanied by a change in key signature. Modulation serve to create or articulate interest in many, or, uh, structure in many pieces as well as add interest. The reason I like this definition from Wikipedia is this website ever so eloquently defines modulation as one of the reasons that music isn't bland and doesn't completely suck. But there's a word in here that I want to focus on, and that word is key. So what is a key? I'll spare you another Wikipedia definition. Simply put, a key is a tonic and a scale. A tonic, or the root note, is the note that the song tends to resolve to, the song, or you know, that the song is built around. And the scale is pretty much like the song's characteristics. It's the reason why Happy Birthday sounds happy, or why that riff that I played at the beginning of this talk sounded kind of sad. And if we, were to, if we were to overlay these into human traits, the root note is like a person's background, their roots. The scale could be an individual's personality. And when you take somebody's background and your personality, you effectively get someone's perspective, or in this case, their key. And so I want you to think about how two very similar people from different cultures will handle situations very differently for the fact that they're from different parts of the world. Think about how somebody who lives in your household with you will handle a situation differently just because your personality traits are different. And then you think about the 7.5 plus billion different combinations of this that exist on this planet Earth, and you realize how important modulation is in humanity. Because if modulation in music is the ability to change from one key to another, the modulation in humanity is the ability to change perspectives. And so how do composers modulate? Well, they find similarities and differences between these root notes and between these scales, and they make strategies based around what they know. So if you're in conflict with somebody else, can you ask yourself what you know about your own background and how that compares to someone else's? Your personality traits and how that compares to someone else's, and then can you make strategies to harmonize with them? If somebody's acting like a jerk and you say, well, that person's a jerk, I think that's kind of lazy. Because I warn you, there is a huge difference between what we think we know versus what we actually know. And while we may not know a lot, remember, we always have to do the best of what we're given. And so to wrap up, I want to touch on three points. First of all, do not expect to be perfect. If you remember, I was trying to assign finite definitions to every single problem that I encountered and it only blew up in my phrase. Take it from me, save yourself a quarter century of suffering. The second thing that I want to touch on, master your instrument and then use it to modulate with other people. Far too often do we see the unintentional, albeit still dangerous, act of dehumanizing people because they may not think or act or look the way that we do. But the danger isn't that it's common so much. It's because it's more like a latent disease that none of us are really aware of. But we all carry it. All of us are forced to bear its burden. And so when you ask these questions, when you ask about your values in comparison to someone else's, your background, your personality, and you seek to modulate with them, you begin to see the person on the other side as merely a person. Because I think a lot of times we, we define other people that don't necessarily agree with us as like our foe or our enemy. But theoretically, anybody could be your foe, right? That chair that you're sitting on could 
collapse out from under you, make you look like a fool, and then everybody would laugh at you. I hope it doesn't happen. If it does, nobody laugh. But if we stop at those words to define another person, we effectively separate them from their humanity. Me personally, I don't think people mind being wrong. It's being labeled wrong. And I think if we learn to not label somebody, then we will always be humble enough because we will always see them as another human. And whether we're right or wrong in that situation, we will be willing to walk away with something positive, willing to learn something. And finally, this last bit of advice, and perhaps the most important one of all, if there's something that you all walk away here tonight with, I ask you, please let it be this. You see, the more that I studied music theory, the more questions I answered, I realized that every question I answered spawned at least three more. And there was only one constant. And that was what I didn't know would always be exponentially greater than what I did. And I believe it is the same way with people. So I ask you to keep this in mind next time you interact with somebody else. Thank you. Thank you.